Welcome to the land of beans, biscuits, and coffee, the life of the chuck wagon. The chuck wagon was the, the nucleus of the cattle drive. It's what kept everything together. And today we're gonna to share with you a little bit about that. We're near the fire at the moment. And the fire was where all the meals was uh, fixed. And also it was a gathering place for the cowboys in the evenings and they could talk about today's events or what tomorrow's adventures may hold. One of the key components of the chuck wagon was the Dutch oven. The Dutch oven allowed them to not only be able to cook the beans, but to also bake bread. It's a pretty neat invention. Paul Revere, believe it or not, it is not known for that in history, but he's the gentleman that took a regular pot and put the three legs on the bottom and put a, a flat lid on top so that for the first time, folks could bake in their own home, and also on the trail, we can bake cornbread. It's kind of tough eating beans without cornbread. Now, that being a limited diet, you know, beans, biscuits, and coffee, occasionally, uh, and each chuck wagon was different depending on the man running it, but they would bring along some dried fruit, and if the cowboys had been, you know, exceptionally good or he thought they deserved a treat, he would bake them a pie in it, and that was one of the few treats that they ever got out on the trail. It was like I said, with, with no refrigeration, I mean, a lot of folks think that they ate steak with every meal. And the reason that's not true, stop and think about it for one, you know, it's their job to get the cattle from point A to point B. And any animals lost along the trail cut the revenue, which cut their pay. So they're more likely to guard the animals than to kill them. Also, now if a cow broke its leg or something and it couldn't be, you know, a part of the herd, then they could butcher that one animal. But with no refrigeration, they'd do good to eat 3% of that animal, which means we're throwing 97% of it away. So it's not feasible, you know, to eat steak. So beans, biscuits, and coffee, and occasional pies. Now let's take a moment and step over to the chuck wagon and I'll give you the tour. Yeah. Music to a cowboy's ear. The thing he liked to hear most, that meant chow time. Now, one of the things that uh, you don't see in the Westerns that uh, some of the cowboys were on foot. Not every cowboy was on a horse. And you gotta think about it, you know, you've got several hundred head of cattle and they're walking. You don't want them running, stampeding, you want them going at an easy, steady pace. And so a lot of the cowboys were on foot. And that's usually the, the new guy on the, on the cattle drive because you started out toward the back and at the back of the herd is where you ate the most dust. As you earned your way up through the ranks, you got to move toward point so that you was, you know, guiding the animals and out of the dust. Now, these guys worked hard every day. And, and one of our, you know, things, mental pictures we get because of the Westerns, the cowboys were always older men. Believe it or not, your average cowboy's age was from like 16 to 21, hence the name cowboys. And the chuck wagon cook, it was required of him to be an ex-cowboy. That's, that's one of the jobs required, or the requirements for the job. And the reason being, he had to, you know, know what's going on. And being there, he would, you know, guide the cowboys, watch over the cowboys. He knew if they were doing right or doing wrong. And the average chuck wagon cook's age, believe it or not, was 25, because by... 25, you had aged out a cowboy, and it was just that rough of a job. You know, it was, it was too hard to do. Now, the chuck wagon cook, he, you know, he fixed his, their meals. We all got that down pat, but a lot of things that, that they don't realize is on the trails, he gave them their haircuts. When they got hurt, he bandaged them up. When they would, you know, have squabbles between the cowboys, he would settle that. And he was kind of like, you know, judge and jury on the thing. Now, he was second in command, and not even the trail boss questioned or interfered with the chuck wagon around the chuck wagon. That was his area. Now, one of the first things the chuck wagon cook would do, and bless his heart, he was the man that got the least amount of sleep. He would get up long before daylight in the mornings, start a fire, and get coffee going. Because when you're around these cowboys out of their, uh, we call them beds, but... You know, they, no, nobody slept in the wagon. The wagon had to carry 30 days worth of supplies. So the cowboys slept, you know, throughout the camp, you know, on a bed roll with a saddle for a pillow. Now, but the chuck wagon cook, he would get up early in the morning, fix her coffee, 
and try to reheat some leftovers. And another myth is that they had three meals a day. By the time you set everything up, get uh, your fire built and get it going, it's just not feasible for three meals a day. There was actually two. Breakfast was leftovers. If there were some beans and biscuits left over, the one fresh thing that he always kept on hand was coffee. Now, getting up early in the morning, getting the guys started, once they ate, they would put their dishes in a rec pan, which is just a large dish pan, and then he'd send them out of camp, put them on for what they needed to do for the day. He would clean up all these dishes, tender his horses, pack everything down, and if you cook beans, you know you gotta soak beans, and you can't, right ahead of the group, sat down and soaked beans. So they'd have to soak beans on the trail, anything they could to maximize time. And just like anything back in the old days, you had to have common sense and you had to plan ahead. You know, if you don't plan ahead, you get caught off guard and you can't run to the local store and pick up what you need because that's it. Out on the trail, there were no stores. They carried 30 days worth of supplies and they had it strategically set up because there was three main trails and they would run the three main trails and they had it you know, pictured out about where they should be in 30 days. And if there wasn't a town near that area, which a lot of times there wasn't, they would have a supply wagon, ske supply wagon scheduled to meet them you know, on the, the trail. So he got them fed, got them out on doing what they were doing, packed everything up and headed on. And he would try, you know, they would estimate where they would be that evening and set a goal sometimes river crossings or other things or canyons would delay that, but they would set where they should be and he would ride on ahead, get there, set up the wagon, make camp, gather firewood and start that evening's you know supper. So lunch, if you was lucky enough to carry a biscuit or maybe a piece of jerky with you in the saddlebags as you went, that was about it. So to hear that dinner bell in the evening when they come in was music to their ears. This particular chuck wagon is an 1885 chuck wagon, and it's an original. It's registered with the American Chuck Wagon Association. And that is a group of guys who, you know, are set on preserving chuck wagons, which I'm glad because I love history and anything to preserve it is a good thing. But on a chuck wagon, you know, this, there's a, this is the chuck box and the cover that goes over, when you're going down the trail, this, this door is closed. But once you get to where you're going, you let it down and it makes a work table. Now in, inside is everything you need for cooking. All your utensils, your supplies, you know, for the daily use, you have bulk supplies in the back of the wagon. But it, and it's actually, you know, pretty convenient the way everything is set up. We've got a coffee grinder on the corner for making our coffee and a good work air for, you know, mixing up or whatever we need to do or cutting. And then we have drawers uh, for our spices, which is pretty much limited, uh, you know, salt and pepper and things along those lines. Because even, you know, back then, you know, things had to be imported, even like coffee today that, you know, has to be imported. So it was just the very basics. But this, this wagon here, we have watched over it and guarded it. And just like if, if anything breaks on it, you know, we don't just throw a whole new piece on. You go through and you save each individual section that you can so that it stays as much as original as possible. And transporting it to different places, you know, such as here at, at Hart Square is, is tough on it. But we watch over it and protect it. And some of the neat things that we have, like this is a horseshoe. And this horseshoe, a blacksmith took it and, and worked it down and made it into, you know, a fork for working meat and stuff on the fire just in case you had a cow that broke a leg and you got these steaks for the night. And, and that's the way it was back then. They repurposed everything. They, they didn't waste anything. But like I said, you couldn't run out to your local hardware and pick up what you needed. And it, you was constantly trying to keep it protected and guarded and you know, from the elements mainly, because there wasn't a whole lot out on the trail, but just wind and rain, because this, this was it. You know, you had your medical supplies in here. You had um, your hair cutters in here for when the gentleman needed a haircut. Your straight razors for when they needed a shave. You'd hang a mirror on the side of the wagon and take care of whatever you needed. Okay, what makes this actually a chuck wagon is in 1866, Charles Goodnight designed the first chuck wagon. And, and to, to go from a regular wagon to a chuck wagon is one, they added a water barrel on the side and that water barrel would carry on average two to three days worth of water, okay? And then they added a toolbox on the opposite side, and then there you would carry, 
you know, things to reshaw your horses, things to repair your leather harnesses, uh, your saddles, you know, any kind of maintenance, something that you would need on, on the trail. Also, they added what's called a boot box, which is mounted underneath, and that's where you carried your pots and your pans and all your cookware. And then, uh, last but not least, they added um, the chuck box itself, which gives you your cabinetry and your table for working on. Now, the reason the chuck wagon was invented, it was kind of like a, a job perk. You know, cowboys being from 16 to 21, they were kind of young, recluse men, you know, and when they would sign on for a cattle drive, they needed them to, to stick with it. So what they would try to do is, you know, to enlist the better of the cowboys. So they're more likely to stay, and if they got near a town, less likely to get in trouble. So Charles Goodnight, now this one, like I said, was made in 1885, but they originally started in 1866. But uh, he, he designed this as a mobile kitchen for their, you know, di their cattle company. So if you come to work for their cattle company, then you got to eat good, where the other ones, it was just pretty much fend for yourself out on the road. So, and, and it worked good. When, when he designed this, the fir first one was a converted military wagon. So most chuck wagons are converted wagons. It wasn't until much later that they actually started to build chuck wagons, you know, from, from day one when they built that wagon, they knew it was gonna be a chuck wagon. One of the jobs of the cowboys was to brand the cattle. And the reason they branded the cattle, that was like the title or their paperwork for the cattle. You know, that showed ownership. And they would place this in the fire, get it good and hot, and press it against the, the you know, rear flank of the cow. And, you know, it burn into the hide and put a permanent mark there. So, and each one of these were different for a different uh, type ranch. Matter of fact, there's several thousand registered brands to this day. If you'd like a chance to see this in person and really see, you know, all the workings of a chuck wagon, the fourth Saturday of every October, you get a chance to visit a wonderful place called Hart Square. It is it's the biggest, most beautiful collection of, of historic pieces that I've ever seen in my life. So the fourth Saturday in October, please come to Hart Square and check it out in person.